statistics demonstrate that three out of every five children have been out of school for more than a year. Many of them don't have access to a digital device and 50% of our schools were really only open for three hours online, which is really equivalent to three classes. So we have significant learning loss as well. And as I said, excuse me, two weeks ago, we have to get back to face-to-face -face classes. I said that last week in Parliament too. So we have to also make sure that we can get our kids who need to get on the internet to make sure that they have broadband spaces too. So these are the things that I think about daily, hourly. Um, trying to figure out how we can work together to bring solutions to the country. I think Jamaica is a, is, is a great country and or we punch above our weight class, but we need to realize that we have to start thinking outside of the box. So let me see, yes, crime is a huge thing. What is medical tourism? That was a question that came in a while ago. Medical tourism is where we, a country, um, sets up its medical infrastructure with whether it is private investment, but the, typically what happens is that the government creates the spaces for large hospitals or special care. So in India, for instance, they are the number one um, heart specialist. They have something called the Heart Institute. So they do a lot of heart surgeries. They do a lot of um, os um, hip surgeries and knee surgeries. And so they, they cater for tourists, tourists and visitors to come and they provide low cost healthcare because what are those countries recognize is that in the United States of America, they, people can't afford it. So you can go to places like India, buy a plane ticket and get the surgery for much less even with the plane ticket and you'll be fine. Places like Brazil cater in plastic surgery, um, places like Dom the Dominican Republic. So what, um, if you go back and you can scroll through on my page, you can see there's a two part article that I did on medical tourism. And I spoke to people like Dr. Leon Vaughn, who is one of our premier pers um, doctors in eye surgery, who does what is called, um, um, a particular retina surgery um, and I spoke to people like um, Dr. Alfred Dawes who does bariatric surgery and what they were proposing is that we ensure that we can open the country that doctors actually and I was proposing in the article that you, you remove the duty on the tools of trade for doctors so that they actually are able to have a private public partnership that they can even take in public patients maybe two days a week to relieve the pressure on the public health care system and perform surgeries like mastectomies etc so once you give them to those private doctors the incentives they have a responsibility to also help the public health care system so those were some of the things that i actually was talking about um, what is inflation and how does it affect us hmm. inflation is basically when too much money is chasing too few goods. So the prices actually go up. It's, it's basic demand and supply. And what is happening now is that because of the supply disruptions, if you've noticed, because of the pandemic, people started just buying things because of the stimulus checks in the United States as well. And with the loss in persons on the ports, so persons you know, not as much staff. You also had shipping lines that were charging no. Their, their rates have increased by over 400% because of the amount of goods that they have to be carrying. There are tremendous delays. You have ships like in China backed up. You have 270 ships that backed up in China and California. So all of those things, and we have an energy crisis essentially globally where natural gas is the highest it has ever been. So all of those things are, it's almost like a perfect storm. So the prices of goods have gone up. You also have large companies forward purchasing for even three years, um, paper stock because of all the online shopping. So some companies have bought all the commodities um, for, to produce paper and cardboard for the next three years. 
which have also pushed the prices up. So prices are going up. We're heading into a, you've seen where central banks of countries have raised interest rates. That is a way to, they say, to protect, um, to, to cauterize inflation. But in, in, in developing countries like ours, where, where so many people are not working, it's going to be difficult. It has already been difficult, especially for people making minimum wage. And so we really have to also consider, fine, you, you, these are the economic theories that you use to, to balance these things, but you also have to balance people's lives. Portia Simpson Miller always said, you have to balance the books, but you have to balance people's lives. You, we have to raise the minimum wage to make sure that people have a livable wage. The private sector has done very well in this country over the last couple of years because of energy, because of different um, incentives that they have got. And I think it is time that they also look at how we can, a rising tide lifts all boats, and we can't have one set of our people doing well and others that are starving. And, I really am a big proponent for making sure that we raise a minimum wage. Um, your light bill is going to go up too, because in June, JPS asked for a rate increase with OUR, and they said yes. Um, do you think we have a financial literacy problem? I think we have two problems, well, many problems, but I think Jamaicans Things are too expensive in Jamaica because we're import dependent. And I don't want anybody to say, but we can start producing it because globalization really, that can happen. Countries now produce what they're efficient at for export and they import what they're not good at. We don't have economies of scale, for instance, in producing Irish potato. The Potato Growers Association has, if you ask them, um, People can buy French fries much cheaper. So we have to consider seriously economies of scale. But we still pay too much. We pay too much for, for chicken. Jamaicans pay too much for protein. Right now, tin mackerel gone up, corned beef gone up, tin milk gone up. All of these things have gone up. So it's not a matter of financial literacy. I think Jamaicans are some of the most financially savvy people. Them just can't afford, how them, them just can't afford the cost of living. There's a, there's a big difference between being financially literate and just being able to afford your life. We cannot afford our lives, many of them will tell you, because the money can't stretch. When you go to shop for buy with 300, well, if you, if, you, if you consider that a meal is $350 and you're making $7,000 a week, if you really have to go pay a light bill and water bill and transportation and eat, how many times can you eat a day? on $7,000. If you're eating, let us say it is $350. And when I said that recently, people said, no, Lisa, that, 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 not even, that don't even give you a drinks. So let us assume it's $350. What can you go to the shop and buy with that? I can tell you what you're going to buy with it, or what you can buy, because chicken back rays. So typically, what families buy is a pound of rice, a tin of mackerel, or a pound of chicken back, or a pound of flour, you get uh, maybe two tablespoons of oil, a sprig of scallion or thyme, and a pepper or onion. And that is what many families go home and make when you see them go to the shop. So sometimes when somebody beg you a hundred dollars, just please give them because you'd be surprised at how people are surviving and eating. Because if you are eating, if you are only making that how many meals can you eat a day? How many meals can you eat a day? By the time you, you have to factor in transportation. So even in the lockdowns, that is why when people say, but we, they can't shop for more than a day. Their salary does not allow them to shop for more than a day. It is a correct and serious thing. So we have to find the mechanisms for people to be earning more because their purchasing power has decreased with inflation. So even before Corona, um, their purchasing power has, de has decreased by about 10%. So they can't, their salary can't stretch if you're making 47 US um, dollars as minimum wage every week. So, you know, let us, let, I don't talk about things without coming up with solutions for them. And we, we, I have put forward the solutions for them. I'm not in government. But I'm, I'm prepared to, to give those ideas and give them to the government and say, look, 
please, for the best interests of this country, just put it in place. This is not about PMP or JLP. This is about the Jamaican people, the JP. So that is, at this stage and age of my life, um, I'm less about, you know, who is going to get credit for it. I want the Jamaican people's lives to just be better. That's, that's where I am. So, yes. Um, I want to really thank you for listening um, this evening. I want to thank you for, for being a part of it. If you, if you want me to do more lives, you can, you can let me know. You can, you know, send me a message and let me know. And just to say to you that there is really no, no new world. This world, this, this new world has been here for a while. And Jamaica needs to pivot really quickly so that using this opportunity of COVID, we have an opportunity to, to, to set the development agenda for Jamaica in a different way. And we can do that by fast tracking the broadband issues. We can do that by getting our children um, the proper education, first class education and equality in terms of education that they need. We can do it by making sure we raise the minimum wage. We can do it by making sure we give our young people access to savvy jobs by keeping them here in Jamaica. And those are young people to move the needle um, to help us get there. But it starts with having a conversation with our people. It starts by telling them, this is where we're gonna get to. This is where we want to take you to in 10, 15 years and work backwards from that. The one thing I can tell you about Jamaican people is that they know when you're lying. They know when you're not sincere. And if you're open and you're honest with them, they will believe you and they will do it. I've seen it before. And if they believe it is in their best interest and their children's best interest, then we tell you they will come with you. So let's do it. Let's just do it and get it together. So thank you. Um, I see Marvin Ford saying, please ask questions in the Q&A section of Instagram, but those questions weren't asking. Marvin, I'll answer your question. What did you ask? Is it Marvin Ford? Yeah, I'll answer your question. Um, no, I don't need to start funding for broadband. You know, there's something called the Universal Access Fund that has millions of dollars that has the resources to be able to do that. I also, if you scroll back, I spoke to floating a diaspora bond. And if you read how to incentivize our diaspora, that article that I wrote, I showed you how to fund the, the broadband um, infrastructure, which would not only help BPO, but it would also help our education. So those solutions are actually there. Uh, so you can take a look at that for that person who asked about the broadband issue. The, the, it, is Jamaica considering alternative energy? Jamaica is, <laughs> Jamaica, between 2012 to 2015, had the largest renewable infrastructure implemented. So much so that it, there was 460 megawatts of renewable in, um, energy. We had wind, LNG, and we had solar. So it's not a consideration we actually diversified our energy base. That is why when I spoke in Parliament recently, I could speak to the fact that we brought our energy costs down in terms of generation. Why is it that we're not bringing the distribution side down? Why Jamaicans, are, why Jamaicans have to pay so much in terms of light? Because we really ought not to be paying so much in terms of light. So you can, you can actually scroll back and see some of those things that I've, I've been speaking about and, and the solutions. So thank you all. It's been fun. It's been great. Um, enjoy the rest of your Sunday evening, whatever you're doing. And please be safe. Um, adhere to the COVID protocols. Wear your masks and show some love to somebody this week. All right. Much love, much respect. Take care and all the best. Bye.